The types of accidents happening in aviation include a high percentage of loss of control situations. An aerospace engineer, Ed Wishmeyer, has some ideas on how to help pilots avoid losing control of their airplanes and crashing. Loss of control is the primary cause of general aviation fatal accidents, the FAA says. The concept is called Expanded Envelope Exercises, or E3, and their biggest benefit is low cost of implementation. Any flight instructor can teach E3 in any ordinary airplane. I went flying with Ed in his Sporty Vans RV9A to get a feel for the Expanded Envelope Exercises and to see how they worked and if I perceived a benefit. We took off from Ed's home base at Savannah Hilton Head International Airport in Georgia. Some of these exercises are easier, while others require some practice. For example, the fast Dutch rolls specify rolling with full aileron deflection while using opposite rudder to keep the nose on a specific point, something that takes some trial and error. For the low-speed spirals, we pretended we were distracted while turning and landing configuration and then allowed the nose to drop. Surprisingly, we quickly lost 600 feet before recovering. As Ed pointed out, if we were turning base to final for landing, we would have hit the ground before realizing what had happened. While in turns and a steep bank, I tried stalling and recovering but remaining in the same bank. This took a lot of effort and I ended up staying in the stall buffet for too long instead of stalling and quickly recovering. It was challenging to try to maintain at least a 45 degree bank while stalling and recovering. The 6090 serpentines require turning 90 degrees one way using a 60 degree bank with full aileron deflection then turning in the opposite direction. It takes practice to get used to using full aileron deflection, something that most pilots never do. Back at Savannah Airport, Ed asked the tower for permission to fly S-turns on final approach. He then gave me instructions to line up first with the left side of the runway, then the right side, then to line up on short final with the center line, then to land one expansion joint to the right side of the center line. This exercise was just more practice flying precisely. The E3 exercises don't get near aerobatic maneuver limits, but by teaching pilots to get comfortable with flying their airplanes up to and not beyond pitch and bank limits where aerobatics start, pilots will have more cognitive availability to handle other events, Ed explains. Cognitive unavailability is when the pilot's brain is not available to gather in the big picture, and it can be caused by too much focus on one aspect of flying and ignoring other important inputs. After experiencing some of the E3 maneuvers, I agree that it makes sense to offer flight instructors additional tools to help their students gain confidence in and extend their flying skills. I think the maneuvers also give instructors something new to teach students, either as a way to bring pilots back for more beneficial training or as something to demonstrate and practice at flight review time. Thanks for watching this AIN video. Please like, subscribe, and share it if you've enjoyed it. Also, visit AINonline.com for all the latest on the aviation industry.